They came out of nowhere. With their cruisers, plasma weapons, and mechanical beards. Organized. They took our village by force. They left nothing behind but tears and devastation. They were looking for gold and Elysium. The girl that fell from the sky. And only one person was prepared to save her. He woke her up. Contacted her fiance. And took her to the lower ascension station. Only to learn the shocking truth once he got there. Cletus, Gold's fiance, wasn't acting out of love. He had an agreement with Ulysses, the mysterious leader of the Organon, and Argus, his right hand. They needed the Ascension Codes, hidden away in Gold's brain implant, and they wanted to erase her memory. They wanted to make sure no Elysian would ever know that our world is inhabited. For their goal was terrible beyond imagination. They wanted to blow up our world. But they had failed to reckon with the one. He swapped the cartridges. And he restored Goal's memory so that she could bear the truth to Elysium. The name of this one man, this selfless hero, was Rufus. Ba -ba -ba. Um, that wasn't the whole story, was it? That was the first part. I think it's going to be a trilogy. Sounds a bit unbelievable. Yeah, unbelievably cool. But if it really all happened like that, shouldn't I be on my way to Elysium with Cletus? So what are you doing here? Where is Cletus? Why am I unable to remember any of this? And forgive me for asking, but... Why is there a burning saw blade stuck in the side of the ship? Oh, uh, that. Oh, well, I was about to get to that part. So listen up. You're being pathetic. Again about accurate bacteria in the fridge It's getting boring But packing bags due to Dirty socks I threw to Clamshades reporters on Anadon's gone Deny explicated Are you still not persuaded? There's grass growing on your time Panic membrane Remember to pony yourself Sacrifices and oh gosh Now I have to start all over again Bizarre all over again Trash. Trash. And more trash. Isn't it adorable? Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> Hard to imagine I ever wanted to leave here. Ah, Rufus. This is the lad I was telling you about. What? Him? From what you told me, I had imagined a smart young man, not a filthy bum. There's more to him than meets the eye. When I first met him, Rufus was still a... How shall I put this? Just say it. 
I was a self-indulgent slob, but I'm steadily improving. That's right. Right now, for example, he is helping Bozo to get the trawler shipshape. So I am. I was going to ask you whether I can borrow your hammer. No problem. You can take it from my toolbox over there. Thanks, Doc. You're the best. I still don't know, really. Something just doesn't seem right about that boy. But, Grandma Utz, whatever are you talking about? Hmm. May I interrupt for a moment? Of course. Did you find the hammer? Well, not exactly. It's in my tool chest. You're welcome to take it. As long as you promise not to wreak havoc. <laughs> not me. Aren't you worried he might steal something? I trust him completely. Didn't you tell me that he suffers from an exaggerated opinion of himself? Those days are over. Rufus has learned a lot. He is much more careful than before. I hope your young friend doesn't get too close to my John Thomas. The poor thing is so small and fragile. Don't worry. The Rufus I know loves animals. He wouldn't harm the pretty little head of your John Thomas. Rufus seems like a brutal thug to me. Rufus? Brutal? Ha <laughs> ha! Never! I just hope he doesn't turn my whole house upside down. He's just getting a hammer. How much damage could he possibly do? Can a person really change so much? It's very simple. Once burned, Twice shy, and Rufus has burned his fingers more than once. He has learned. I would <laughs> bet the house on it. And you're sure he won't do anything to my John Thomas? One hundred percent. And if he has to use the toilet, then he can do that on the trawler. Of course, Grandma. It's just that I have hardly any water left. He's just getting a hammer. All I'm saying is that he seems very clumsy. Your fears are completely groundless. Rufus has become very careful since his last adventure. What if he suddenly blows a fuse? Believe me, those days are over. Even wash his hands? Of course he did. Rufus is very clean. That's good. I have a very limited supply of water. Hmm. If that's all true, then he must have turned himself around 180 degrees. That's how it is. 
As if someone installed a power inverter in him. Well, I still have my doubts. That Rufus looks to me like an arsonist. You know what they say. No doubt burns so hot that it can't be extinguished with a wet tablecloth. But my tablecloth is as dry as a bone. It would set the whole place on fire in the blink of an eye. Oh, Grandma. That's just a saying. No one here is gonna set anything on fire. Hmm. If that's all true, then he must have turned himself around 180 degrees. That's how it is. As if someone installed a power inverter in him. And he shouldn't give John Thomas too much to drink under any circumstances. <laughs> Well, if that's all you're worried about. Something like that can kill a little bird. Rufus isn't going to drown your bird by accident. He would ask before he used my water supply, wouldn't he? Absolutely. Good. Good. I have to get by on what I have until the end of the month. Perhaps I'm worrying unnecessarily. After all, John Thomas is very good at self-defense. Oh, Grandma Oots. As if that would be at all necessary. Almost have me convinced, but there is one thing that still worries me. He had better not clog my garbage disposal. The blades are so sharp, things are always getting caught in there. Oh, Grandma, you worry about the silliest things. If you promise me that he will be careful, then everything is all right. Just as long as nothing happens to my John Thomas. Promise. Hmm. Then I should apologize. I suppose your Rufus really must have improved. Well, what do you know? Here it is. Have you found it at last? Ah, uh, yeah, sure. It certainly took you long enough. I hope you didn't leave a mess. Me? No way. But enough chit-chat. Bozo's waiting. Just relax, Rufus. It's not like anything's on fire. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. By the way, what's that funky smell? Rufus, have you gone completely off the deep end? You almost set Grandma Utz's heart on fire. All for a good cause. You committing suicide? No, I'm traveling to Elysium. But Rufus, we've been through all that. I thought you would finally become reasonable. Become reasonable? I am reasonable. And that's exactly why my plan is going to work this time. What plan are you talking about? Well, what does it look like? It looks like a madman's attempt to refute the principle of action and reaction. Close enough. Goodness gracious me. 
As soon as I step on these bellows, the cork will hit the three targets one by one. In a spectacular chain reaction, this will cause the rockets to be lit and the safety rope to be cut. I have calculated everything. Just watch and learn. Oh, and keep away from the falling blade if you want to hold on to your fingers. Elysium, here I come. Watch your fingers, Doc. As soon as the cork hits the third target, the scale will trigger the guillotine. It would be insane to believe that will work. But it would be even more insane to assume I would be safe here. After the cork ricochets off the other two targets, it will hit exactly here. I've calculated everything precisely. How did you calculate that? Well, the way you calculate things. Y you lie down for a while, and these mathematical formulas come to you in your sleep. An apology is about to be due. You'll see, I will go to Elysium. Stop it, Rufus. The only thing you will achieve is a spectacular suicide. Don't panic. I've calculated everything. The first target opens the gas tap on the Bunsen burner, which then lights the fuse. Isn't it more probable that the cork will simply knock over the Bunsen burner? My design is based on science, not some nebulous probabilities. The calculation of probabilities is an integral component of all sciences. <laughs> For you, maybe. My science is based on hearsay and inner conviction. The cork is in place and precisely oriented. Well, approximately precisely. Second, the cork will ricochet off this pan. I seriously doubt that. On what do you base this assumption? Well, I drew a target on it, didn't I? Oh, heavens. Light the fireworks as soon as the saw blade is in the air. Then, they will create enough spin to catapult me directly to Elysium. At the halfway point, Eagles will start to fly alongside me, if my sketch is correct. Take a good look! Rufus, no! <laughs> Doc! Uh-oh. Doc, that's not a good place for a nap. The Bunsen burner could boil away the water in the vase any minute. And when the scales pan goes up, it will trigger the guillotine. The fuse is already lit. Doc, are you listening? Wake up! Oh, what a bummer. Save Doc or go to Elysium. Save Doc or go to Elysium. Darn it, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? Huh, Doc really picked a great spot to fall unconscious. I have to find some way to get him away from there before the water boils away. Actually, it should have held. I think I can reach it. Oh, not quite. Must be because of the wind. And whoop! Oof, perfect body control, as always. Maybe I can scratch a little black powder out of there. That shouldn't affect the flight characteristics of the saw blade, should it? <laughs> that tickles. With the right momentum, I could catapult the black powder into the air intake of the bellows. Easy and totally realistic. If the black powder reaches the flames, it could ignite the gas. And then, mm, there's bound to be an interesting chain reaction whose outcome is very difficult to predict. What am I waiting for? It, oh, it worked! I saved Doc! Ah! 
Rufus, Rufus. Huh? What? You haven't answered my question. How did you get here? I just don't understand. That's because there is nothing to understand. The whole story is nothing but one big filthy lie. Almost as filthy as Rufus, but not quite. Cletus? Of course it's Cletus. Why would that surprise you? I am not the one who barged in here uninvited. I have come to save my planet. Well done, moron. Goal and I had reached an agreement. I was trying to keep the existence of the Deponians a secret from the Council of Elders so that Deponia could be exploded, but Goal convinced me to tell the truth. We were just about to save Deponia. The escape pod was taking us to Elysium. Now, it's useless. We're not going to make it to Elysium, and the Council of Elders will never learn about the Deponians. Bravo, Rufus. That was a stroke of genius. Don't listen to him, Goal. He's lying through his teeth. I don't know. His version does sound pretty convincing. No, remember, he's lied to you before. The Goal that I know would never have let him get away with it. That's because you only know one part of Goal. The part that is naive and idealistic. The Goal that I know is a fighter who will stand up for what she believes in. But there is a third part as well. And that part sides with me. Isn't that true, Goal? There is no third part. You tell him, Goal. I... I just don't know. I, I can't remember a thing. Of course you can't. Thanks to this Fleabag's brilliant intervention, your brain implant has been damaged. It's a habit of his. I I'll fix it! Don't worry! You still don't get it, do you? We have no use for you here. If you really want to help Goal, then jump. We're directly over the ocean. With a little luck, you may even survive the fall. No! No, this isn't right! Oh, come on. Do what is best for Goal. If I'm interpreting the label correctly, this is the button for the ejector seat. <laughs> that looks like an ejector seat. Huh, there's still dust on the label. <sighs> A shrink ray. <laughs> That's even better than an ejector seat. Wait, there's more dust. <sighs> awesome! A bear! That's my favorite so far. <sighs> huh. Must be the ejector seat after all. And again, the shrink ray. The bear. I like the bear. I better not blow again. I'm what's best for goal. No, don't! Ha! Huh, nothing. Why? I wonder if... Uh-oh! You idiot! Goal! No, 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 no! You blasted idiot! Cletus, help me! Hang on! Don't panic! I'll come and get you! Somehow! Do you finally realize the damage you're doing? Cletus! Don't panic! I'll get you! Why don't I do everyone a favor and kill you right here? I'm coming, Goal! Hang in there! Where do you think you're going? I'm on my way! Watch out! The rope's going to break at any moment! What are you doing? Did you really think you could get away like that? Say bye-bye, Rufus. Cletus, no! Cletus! 
Ah! Ah! Oh dear, what have I done? I still can't believe he really did that. No need to worry, really. He's just like a wombat. He often falls, but he always lands on all, uh, um, all the others. I know. What is that noise? Ah! What the? Goal? Ah, uh, don't be silly. If that were goal, the next we could expect. Ah! Rufus? Rufus. Ouch. Everything's ready for detonation, Bailiff. Acknowledged, Chief Blaster. Anything else? Are there no new instructions? We could start the countdown now. I appreciate your eagerness, but this is not a training maneuver. This is about destroying the zone around the Rust Red Sea, before we blow up the entire planet. I see, Bailey. Stop interrupting me! I know very well what is at stake here. Do you think I wasn't aware of all the implications? It is true. Inspector Cletus has not yet reached Elysium. We can only guess what kept him. But as long as there is still hope that he will complete his task, we need not worry. Until then, I don't want to hear about any countdowns. Do you understand? Yes, I do, Bailey. Cletus is going to succeed. He will convince the Council of Elders that there is no sentient life on Deponia. And if he should fail, then we shall see to it that the planet is indeed uninhabited. Uh, dismissed! I have too many worries of my own to deal with your moral misgivings, so get out! Out, I say! Y uh, yes, sir. Where the devil is Cletus? The most epic tales feature cool depictions of saw blades crushed into cable boat walls. The attempt is all blunt stunned, effective goals and planned, which surely can't be blamed on Rufus at all. Reckoning up the sun, the best was yet to come. For the end of part one seemed a little too coarse, and to amend we'll send him to a tenth second chance for a decent happy ending. The grand fling was dancing in boots and so forth. Huzzah with boots and so forth.